In today's video, we'll take a look how we can apply this laser grid effect using Affinity Photo. Before we start, first, let's quickly go through the steps. First thing we'll do is to mask our subject. We will use the mask subject as a displacement map. For this, we will apply a little bit blur to it and convert it to black and white. Next, we will create a grid. Once we have our grid, we can now use the displacement map of our subject on the grid. Finally, we can apply some blending and effects to fine-tune the effect. Now that we have a plan, let's get started. To mask our subject, I will use the selection brush, but you can use whatever method works for you. Once I have my rough selection, I'll use refine option to fine-tune the mask. When I'm happy with the selection, I'll output it to a new layer with mask. This will create a new layer with the selection applied as a mask and hide the original. Now that we have our subject, let's convert it to black and white using the channel mixer. If we select gray for the output channel, the image will be converted to a natural black and white image. I'll also make sure the adjustment is a child of our subject layer so that the black and white conversion will be clipped only to this layer. Before moving on, we also need to add a little blur to our subject in order to have it act as a displacement map. Using the Gaussian Blur Light Filter, we can add a blur around 4 pixels for this image. Let's also not forget to enable the Preserve Alpha checkbox. To finish it, I'll also add a black fill layer below our subject so that we get a black background. Finally, to keep things organized, let's group our subject and the fill layer. Time to create a grid. I'll do this very quickly and dirty just by drawing a vertical line and set the stroke width of the line to 2 pixels. While the line is selected, I'll press the Enter to open up the Move and Duplicate dialog. You can be really precise about your grid, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just eyeballing it. A horizontal value of 15 and 70 duplicates will get the job done. Let's select all the created lines and group them to keep the layers panel a bit organized. We got our vertical lines. For the horizontal lines, I'll just duplicate this group and rotate it by 90 degrees. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'll group the two groups and name it, as you guessed, Grid. Let's turn on the layer we created before to see our displacement image. With the group Grid selected, I'll add the Live Displacement filter. In the Displacement dialog, I'll use the Load Map from Layers Beneath in order to displace the grid. Let's hide the Displacement image layer to see the effect on the grid. Excellent, we're almost done. Let me enable the displacement image back. And to make the grid more computeristic, I'll change the stroke color of the grid group to green. Pretty nice. I feel we need a little bit more displacement. For this, I'll add a pixel layer in the group with the black and white blurred image. With a black brush, I'll paint some areas in the pixel area where I want more displacement. I can now go back to the displacement filter of the grid and reload the displacement map by pressing the load map from layers beneath. As you notice, we got a bit more displacement in the grid and now it is time for fine tuning. I'll copy and paste the black and white image and the black fill. The black will be placed at the bottom to act as a background color. For the black and white image at the top, I'll use the soft line blend mode so that the grid lines get some luminosity information from the image. We could also duplicate the grid and change the grid density of this duplicate by resizing the group with the lines. I'll also add a glow to this more dense grid using the outer glow effect from the quick effects panel. For the glow color, I'll use green to fit with the original grid color. To finish up, we can change the blend mode of this glowy grid to screen and lower the opacity. Let's re-enable the top black and white image in soft light blend mode and we got a pretty good end result. Feel free to experiment with different grid sizes and glows to get different results. For example, here is a different end result with a very fine grid. 
In this example, I have used an asymmetrical grid and also looks quite interesting. Hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.